Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. Every day the boy would come and say, Gosh, I love you, tree. Let's be together forever. Why, that would be lovely, child. And I will always be here for you. The boy loved the tree, and the tree was happy. But time went by, and the tree got older, and the tree was often alone. Then, one day, the boy came to the tree, and the tree said, Come, boy! Come climb up my trunk and swing! <laughs> Find out how you too can save the trees! giant furry peanut. I'll go right up your nose. Whoa! You wouldn't hit a woman. That's a woman? <laughs> I am the critic. I speak for the Seuss. Observing how all of this bullshit got loose. The Lorax, a book that's read by a ton, has been ripped into shreds and can't be undone. The timelessly written book of all ages succumbs to the dumb of the focus group cases. <laughs> well, I'm standing up for the small hairy orange. I'm going on up there and... You know, I'm done rhyming. To the Lorax being a huge hit. Yes, now let's see if we can make a live action version of Goodnight Moon starring Medea. Great, another pep talk from the Seuss Nazi, or as I like to call them, Seussies. You think you can get away with dumbing down Dr. Seuss like you did with the cat and have the Grinch? Follow up question, didn't I kill you two? We're like mononucleosis, we never fully go away. And we often put you to sleep. Don't you see the harm you're doing to the wonderful world Dr. Seuss created? The box office disagrees. Indeed, the people love it. But that's what's making it worse! Do I really have to show you the obvious problems you're causing? No, but I get the feeling you're going to anyway. This is the Lorax! <sighs> we open in Thneedville as the credits roll, a town made completely out of plastic and where no trees exist at all. Thneedville, it's a brand new dawn. <sighs> I like to thank this film for making me realize how sick I am of over-the-top, upbeat musical intros. Sorry, opening to the Muppets movie, I have to hate you now. <laughs> Blame this movie! So we see a Gap Kids commercial meet up with an Abercrombie and Fitch commercial voiced by timeless acting giants Zac Efron and Taylor Swift. Oh, hi, Ted. Oh, hey, Audrey. Hi. Wow, that is not the voice I expected to come out of that kid. You know, because a 12-year-old boy should always be voiced by a 26-year-old man, right? All right, cool. Hey, I gotta run. I gotta go do a thing. So, uh, I'll see you guys. I'm pretty sure that's how they did in the Iron Giant, isn't it? Hey, Dean! Watch this! Banzai! <laughs> Come on in! The, 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 the water's great! No thanks. <laughs> you weenie! It turns out this girl is an artist who paints pictures of trees and dreams one day being able to see a real one. If a guy somehow got you one... Well, I'd probably marry him on the spot. I bet that sounds crazy. Does that sound crazy? Well, that depends. Do you mean it literally, or do you have a good sense of humor, or nothing else is going to be revealed about you in this movie, is it?
Here, just a bland piece of who ass to get his truffalo growing so he can set out on this movie's hypocritical quest, aren't you? And people said that the touch of their tufts was softer than anything. Well, any other cliché characters, or as I like to call them, cliché occurs, you like to get out early in the movie? Oh! The hip rocking granny! Okay, okay, any others? Disco! Dis -dis -dis the embarrassing parent! Painful, very painful, any others? The more smog in the sky, the more people will buy. Oh, yeah. oh, of course, the corporate bad guy who owns the town with no redeeming elements whatsoever. You could call him the missing Captain Planet villain, Sheppy. How can I possibly make even more money? <laughs> we can tell you, sir, we can tell you. Why, he's so evil, he wants to actually sell fresh air to people because their pollution is already destroying the air that they have. Um, Spaceballs did it? I make a living selling fresh air to people. Trees, oh, they make it for free. I consider it kind of a threat to my business. Okay, first of all, if you're gonna steal Edna Mode's design sheet, pick a voice that matches. Those vocals match about as well as, oh, hey, Audrey. That. Second, isn't the idea of the Lorax that there is no real bad guy? It's just a cautionary tale of when someone, anyone takes too much without seeing it. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, Nothing's going to get better. It's not. But you don't understand. We don't want people to feel bad about themselves. Yes, people are less likely to buy things when they feel bad. It's easier to show a clear right and wrong message so that no kids are confused. But maybe they should be confused. Hell, maybe what you're doing is confusing them in a different way. Look! When you make your characters less human, you suck out the humanity, meaning people are less likely to see what they can become. Daddy, could that be me? No, kiddo. He's evil. You're good. Oh, okay. Man, I'm glad I'm not as evil as that guy. Yeah. Just like a delicate seed can grow a great oak, so can a faulty message grow a big problem. Yes, but clearly we show it in a satirical sense, so that makes it all right. In what way? How does laughing at the bad things you do make it any less bad? Well, the chart says... Forget it! So many Trump watches the boy leave the town to find a tree, leading him, of course, to the home of the Onceler. Well, there went the surprise of the powerful line that closed out the original. Oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna assume nothing in this film is gonna move me at all. It's really the best way to watch it. Who are you? Who are you and what are you doing here? My god, we finally found Bill Watterson! Oh! You wanna know about trees? About what happened to them? Why they're all gone? So the Onceler, of course, tells the story about what happened to all the trees, naturally keeping his face hidden throughout the story so, like I said before, he can represent how this can happen to anyone. Anyone watching right now- Fuck you, 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 fuck you! Maybe I'm over-exaggerating. After all, it is an hour and a half long movie. An hour and a half is a long time to go without seeing your... kinda main character. I mean- it's an adaptation. I got it. There's gonna have to be changes from an adaptation. Fair enough. At the very least, they're making him timeless. Somebody that everyone can look back on years later and not laugh at for being so incredibly dated and dumb. I'm gonna chop one down and make my th I don't care for that. This onesler is a super young, electric guitar playing, tight clothes wearing, fedora hat toting, pop cultural referencing, Zach Braff ing, completely dated product of the times. Na, 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 na. Oh, I got a little jingle. Uh, no. Gonna blow some minds. Whoop it up, up, up. Yeah, see? Hey, yeah, no, uh, no. What's his problem? I'm just saying. Weirdo. Bull fucking shit. Yes, and the Onecelings seem to love him. The what? The Onecelings. Apparently our character was so hip with the ladies that they decided to form an online community around him. Engage. Oh my god, this was a thing? 
Yes, and we even have one online right now. She calls herself Hyper Fan Girl. Oh my god, guys! I just love all the emo haircuts you're giving to the Dr. Seuss characters! You're giving them a style that'll last forever, like the Jonas Brothers! Why do you love this Onceler? He's every other quirky alternative product mixed into a Michael Sarah action figure. They should have called him the hipster! Ooh. He is clearly not a hipster. Hipsters act like they don't care how they look and then they take seven hours to put their outfits together. He clearly only took six. You can't just like someone because he's really nerdy, into retro media, and wears a bunch of half professional, half grungy clothes. What are you doing this evening? Not you, Dumper. <gasps> You know, you really are a bit of a hipster. Shut up! So the Onceler, <coughs> oh shut up, comes across a landfill with trees and painfully obvious minion backwash. <laughs> as he starts to chop them all down for his new business. Little did I know that by chopping down that tree, I had just summoned a mystical creature as old as time itself. The Danny DeVito cameo! Of course, the Lorax is in one of the trees as all the characters circle around the chopped down life to mourn its loss. Now that's actually a very touching moment that fits the spirit of the book. It's new, it's different, but it keeps to the message, love, and even kind of subtlety of what Seuss was going for. How do they fuck it up? Well, clearly we can make the message much more powerful by adding in Mission Impossible homages. A dozen more of those minion moments. <laughs> and the non-violent pacifist Lorax of the original now trying to drown our hero in the hope that that'll lead him away. Oh, and don't forget a few more lame-ass pop cultural references. Why aren't you like other kids? Break dancing and playing the Donkey Kongs. So Donkey Kong is now officially part of the Dr. Seuss canon? I don't know how to feel about that. I know, it's so retro. Hold me! So the Wilford Brimley Oompa Loompa feels bad about almost drowning the once -ler. <laughs> Shut up! So he makes it up to him by tearing the shit out of his new home. And it was cold outside, and we just fell asleep. Okay, I put my lips on the... Ew! What's for breakfast? Breakfast is overrated. Hey, why do you have one of these? You don't even have a mustache. Yes, teaching lessons about staying out of others' environments is made much stronger by invading your environment. I got work to do. Yep, I gotta go into town and sell my thneed. So the one slur... <laughs> don't make me impale you! makes a deal with the Lorax that he won't cut down any more trees and that the one he got is enough to sell his product called the Thneed. Hey, cool hat. Oh my gosh, I totally want one. That thing makes me like you more. Ah, how advertisers thought marketing for the Lorax would work. And sadly did work. And there went my enjoyment for the upbeat Lego movie song. Blame this movie! It's the one that made me realize it was being overused! I should point out that it does sometimes cut back to our main lead still suffering from bland millennial itis, but they're so rushed and so generic that you forget about them just as soon as you watch them. I think the most that happens is the man paints over Flower Girl's artwork. Why? What's that even supposed to accomplish? Is that really gonna make such a big difference? It's kind of like saying, oh, you want to see Elsa and Jack Frost together? Well, what if we just put a giant axe over your fan art? Now you'll never ever want to see them again as long as you live, will you? Will you? <laughs> hey, did you damage my fan art? I still love you. So 
the Wunzler's family comes out to live with him, and once again, it's not the Wunzler himself who's consumed by productivity. That would make him interesting, identifiable, and complex. No, it's just his evil family that eggs him on. So, I guess as long as you don't have one of those, this could never happen to you. We could always start chopping down the trees. But- No buts, Wancy. You're running a business now. You have to do what's best for the company and your mama. Even his progression seems hastily rushed. The original was good at showing the Wunzler debate himself, but then always find an excuse to keep going bigger. And even the story never claimed that going to another extreme was the answer. Well, what do you want? I should shut down my factory, fire a hundred thousand workers. I see your point. But I wouldn't know the answer. It was trying to find that middle row that wasn't victimless, but was the best compromise we could come up with. Here, one song and boom! Overnight douche! How bad can I be? I'm just building the economy. Instead of slowly but surely over the course of the film, we see the progression of all these choices and the effect that it's having. It's just one song! Anakin Skywalker's transition was more complex. And the PR people are lying! And there's your allegory for the movie right there. Just take a picture with the Lorax on your product and boom! It's suddenly Lorax approved. Ironic this song is against everything corporate when that's exactly what the Lorax marketing was doing. Enjoy your air polluting car. The Lorax says it's okay. How bad and bad and can I be? On top of that, have you noticed that out of the five songs in this movie, only one is pro trees and it's only played at the end? And yes, I know they're being ironic and praising over productivity, but by God, four upbeat, modern-style pop songs about it and only one? Fucking one song that actually says give a damn about the trees? Don't you see even a little bit of a problem with that? It says the people with the money People with the money Make this ever-loving world go round They're not even timeless songs. They all sound like the top ten from Radio Disney. Well, we're just trying to reach the most popular demographic. You can respect that, trying to get your message out to as many people as possible. A toast to pandering! Yeah, but the popular way isn't always the lasting way. Look again! Fad is just one letter away from fade, and that's exactly what they do. They fade away. That's why it's better to focus on being good rather than being popular. If you can be both, great, but if you have to choose one over the other, always pick good over popular. Because once the people grow out of it and move on to the next popular thing, there's nothing of substance to bring them back. And the timeless message you claim to fight so hard for becomes just another passing trend to forget about. It's okay, the internet speeds up everything. Yes, it'll be popularly retro in five minutes. And synchronize. So as I'm sure you guessed, the Wunzler finally chops down the last tree and his business, as well as the forest, is completely gone. The Lorax lifts his ass into heaven, leaving Evil McObvious to be inspired to be the next big tyrant. I wonder what the next million dollar invention's gonna be. <laughs> yeah! I wonder! And of course, you know how the rest of the story goes. The Onceler gives the boy the last seed and it's left up to him, as well as the children watching, to make the choice on whether or not they'll grow a cleaner and better world. Leaving on a powerfully quiet, emotionally fueled, and subtly ambiguous final note. we're missing from Dr. Seuss, it was more fucking car chases. Also, we get the big bad corporation trying to take control of the people's minds. <laughs> By God, they're making Hail Hydra sound like a weather-resistant German car. You won't get away with this, boy! Throw in a radical snowboarding granny. Seriously? How cool is your grandma? A tubular scooter that's probably polluting the more times he rides around on it. Seriously, you're just talking. Do you have to ride around in circles like that? And we clearly see the town not over the progression of time and patience, but rather fucking instantly join the boy's side, go out to plant a million trees, and sing another pop song about it. Okay, 
God, people were satirizing it before it even came out. How popular is this song? We even see the Lorax come back. Yep, he comes back, removing all the weight of ambiguity and sense of urgency and instead gives the kids their happy little ending. You done good, Beanpole. You done good. Aw, isn't that just precious? Say, while you're at it, why don't you just clarify that Bambi's mom never died? Yeah, that was a bit of a downer. Why don't you just clarify that she came back and they all lived happily ever after? Come to think of it, why don't you just reveal whether or not the top falls over in Inception? Or why don't you just tell us what Bill Murray said to Scarlett Johansson? Or give away what was in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Because that's what life is made up of, right? Answers. Easy, non-thought-provoking answers. And we need to prepare kids for just how fucking easy life is going to be. Yeah, sure, they made us think, but look at it this way. They made us think! Ah! But thinking gives children unclear answers. Well, maybe that's the idea, goddammit. Maybe the message will last longer because people keep coming back to think about it. No, 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 no. As our data has shown, this has gone retro right about... Now, surely all the people have returned... <laughs> ah, this sucks. My god, that was the last Lorax movie fan. There's nothing left to exploit. Yeah. That's because you've given them nothing challenging and thus nothing valuable to keep coming back to. Well, it's not as bad as the Grinch or the Cat in the Hat, and the animation style is colorful and lends its way to Seuss's world better than live action. The Lorax still sucks in capturing the spirit of Dr. Seuss. Instead of being poetic, it panders to the mainstream. Instead of having it speak to everyone, it paints extremes that alienates the truth of the story. And instead of being dark and subtle, it knocks you on the head with its message, ironically making it far less memorable. People aren't going to be coming back because you gave them nothing that shows you respect them as thinking people. You simplified it, made it easy, so easy that nobody finds it fun anymore. I don't care how many movies you make, how popular they are for the moment, or how often you keep missing the spirit of these great stories. Because no matter what you do, people are always going to keep returning to the books of Dr. Seuss. Not only because they remember them, but because they're worth remembering. Critic, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. What? What? Huh! Black Willy Wonka! That's right, it was me all along. This wasn't on your resume. Oh look, a popular demographic you can exploit. Oh, wait! I have charts! I have charts! Come with me, critic. This is my Black Wonka Vader. Wow, does it go every way possible? Yes, every button goes a different direction. And I've pressed them all, except this one. What direction does that go? Up. Aren't those the people who saw the movie? Sure are. But they're reading the book. I thought they were done with the Lorax. Well, you see, Critic, that was part of my ultimate plan. It was? Yes. You were right about Seuss. His books will last forever. But sometimes people take that for granted. So what better way to remind them of Seuss's power than making films that completely fucks them up? So the Grinch, the Cat in the Hat, the Lorax, they were all purposely terrible and dated? They needed to be popular so that everyone would see them, but they also needed to be horrible so that everyone would go back to remember just how good the original stories were. True beauty never fades. We just need to be reminded of it once in a while. And for discovering this, I get your money-making secrets as well as a lifetime of happiness? No, you get a button. Thanks. But Critic, don't forget what happened to the man who got everything he always wanted. What happened? I killed him and stole all of his possessions. 